general relativity step by step. Um, last time I was talking about the linear case uh, and I made the observation or I made the assertion that this component here of the metric tensor behaves like a tensor and I was a little bit coy about exactly what way it does behave like a tensor. So what we're going to do is see if it obeys tensor, uh, tensor rules and I guess the first thing we have to do is to think about how we might raise or lower these indices. We've got two downstairs indices, and I might want to consider H with two upstairs indices. So, so how does that work? Let, let's have a think about this. Well, what I'm going to do is to define G alpha beta with two upstairs indices equals the same old Minkowski matrix plus, let's call it a K alpha beta, and we don't know what that is. So that's how we would raise that index we would raise those two indices from downstairs position to the upstairs in position simply by starting with with with, with another equation like this equation but with known uh, known components except for this thing that we don't know so we've got two uh, metric tensors here one with two downstairs one with two upstairs indices and of course the thing that we know about metric tensors is that when we multiply them together g let's contract on a mu that's a new, let's call that an alpha, that equals the um, Christoffel tensor, uh, not Christoffel, sorry, not Christoffel tensor, that's the Kronecker delta, Kronecker, get my Christoffels and my Kronecker's mixed up there. What have we got left? We've got a new down there, the mu is summed over, and an alpha. Okay, so delta alpha mu equals g mu nu from here is just eta mu nu plus h mu nu times from this equation here, oops, eta, and one of my indices, I've got mu alpha, mu alpha, plus k mu alpha, and we don't know that. We know this, we know this, we know this, and I guess we know that. So, of course, what I'm going to do is just to multiply this yeah, I'm going to multiply the things out. I was pausing there because I was concerned that I had too many downstairs indices. But we've got two downstairs indices here and two upstairs indices here. So let's just write it out. Mu, nu, eta, mu, alpha. And of course, these things are going to simplify. Plus eta, mu, nu, k, mu, alpha. Plus, and now we do this term, h, mu, nu, eta, mu alpha plus i'll write it all out but things are going to cancel out dead easily mu nu uh, k mu alpha so where does that get us that's kronecker delta alpha mu delta alpha mu equals well we know that the product this way of any metric tensor is going to give us the kronecker delta uh, mu alpha plus eta mu nu k mu alpha. Remember, we don't know what k is. We're trying to work this out. Plus h mu nu eta mu alpha. Plus, well, I'm just going to assert that that's a zero because this is a second order term. I'm assuming, or I'm, I'm yeah, I'm assuming that this term is also small. We know that our h term is small. And I'm going to assert that k is small as well. You can prove it's small, but I'm just going to assume it here. Uh, well, that's great. My deltas cancel. And what have I got left? I've got eta mu nu k mu alpha, copying this term here, equals minus h mu nu eta mu alpha. Let me pinch in a little bit on that. Okay, and I want to know what my k is. K. Well, I've got this k here, but it's multiplied by this uh, Minkowski metric here. So what I want to do is to kill that. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation, mu nu k mu alpha, by another Minkowski metric. What I want to do, we've got mu summed. I'm going, I want to kill the nu. What's my next letter here? Pi, I guess. Equals minus h mu nu eta mu alpha multiplied by the same side, nu pi. And of course, eta is my, uh, oh dear, 
Eta is my Minkowski metric, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Nice, simple, constant, simple matrix, diagonal of, of that. Uh, so what have I got here? I've got this thing is K mu nu times eta mu nu, eta nu pi. And this thing, of course, is going to be a Kronecker delta. The nu's are summed over mu pi times k mu nu. And by the brilliance of Kronecker delta, Kronecker delta picks out just the term where mu equals pi. So this thing altogether is equal to k uh, nu pi. That's the left-hand side. What does the right-hand side equal? Uh, well, I'm not going to do anything at all to that. I'm just going to assert that that equals minus h mu nu eta. I'm just copying from here. Uh, what symbols have I got? Mu alpha and another Minkowski metric, mu pi. So that tells me that k mu pi equals minus h mu nu eta mu alpha eta mu pi. Actually, it's not equal exactly. This is equal, but only to first order. Oh, well, that's okay. That's, that's all we're considering. So basically what that tells me is that I can raise and lower my indices. K nu pi equals minus H mu nu, eta mu alpha, eta nu pi. We can raise and lower our indices simply by using the flat space metric. So to summarize all of this, we know that G let's say alpha beta, equals eta alpha beta plus uh, h alpha beta. We know that g alpha beta upstairs indices equals eta alpha beta. Sorry, that's uh, eta alpha beta minus h alpha beta. Oh, no, that's downstairs. It's got to be upstairs. Alpha beta. You see... These tensor equations have got to be consistent in the placing and number of their indices. And we've got two downstairs indices, two downstairs, two downstairs. Here we've got two upstairs, two upstairs. And I wrote them in the wrong place. I wrote them down there. Where h alpha beta equals from this formula minus h alpha beta downstairs, eta, eta. Let's get this right. We'll contract on an alpha. Excuse me. Alpha. We'll contract on a beta. And what have I got? You see, I'm getting it wrong again. We've got alpha and beta on the upstairs, and so I need alpha and beta free on the upstairs, and I've got them summed down here. They should be summed with two other dummy indices, which I'll call pi and sigma, and I'll put them there, pi and sigma. So that's quite nice. We've got an upstairs, we've got a downstairs uh, metric tensor, we've got an upstairs metric tensor, and the components are related by this formula here, which amounts to saying that we can raise and lower the indices using the flat space metric. We don't need to use G alpha beta to raise and lower the indices. We can get away with using the flat space metric. That's wonderful. I'm going to stop there. Stop.